In this screencast, we're going to talk about Express Middleware. Middleware is probably the most important topic in Express because virtually every app in Express uses middleware to some extent. And every NPM package with Express is either injected as middleware or it utilizes middleware by itself as well. So um, I have a boilerplate application here, which is just importing Express listening on port 3000. And then there are two handlers for different routes. So there's a slash greeting route, which responds hello stranger. And there's a slash greeting slash name route, where name is a route parameter. And this one greets you by name. So hello, and, and then name is interpolated in this string. Um, if the name is equal to Voldemort, though, it's actually going to throw an error. And this looks like a contrived example right now. But when we talk about error handling middleware, um, this is actually like a pretty um, similar pattern to express production route validation or error handling. So bear with me for a minute. And I already have the app running. So we can go into localhost 3000. And we're going to need to go to slash greeting. And it gets hello stranger. If we go to slash greeting slash Bob, it says hello, Bob. And then Voldemort, we have our error message as well as a stack trace. And we definitely don't want to show the users our stack trace because it's kind of revealing it, the internals of our app. So we'll talk about how we can make our error message prettier by using an error handler in a bit. But first, let's actually talk about middleware generally, conceptually. So middleware can be um, placed in any of these route handlers, basically. So you can do an app.get middleware, you can do an app.post middleware, app.all, or just a generic app.use. Um, I'm going to use the app.use right now. And the first argument here, I can either pass it a path to match, which is like the other ones, if I wanted to have my middleware just beyond slash greeting, for example. Or if I don't put a path and instead just put the callback handler, then um, it will be injected uh, for every re uh, request, basically. So I'm going to modify the request object in this to have a test property. And we can just put woof on there. And I'm going to call next. Um, and we'll see what that does. Um, and I'm also going to console.log request.test in this middleware. So let's go into our server. Um, we can do request greeting slash um, John Snow. Okay, and you can see Wolf is there. So what actually happened in our app code? Um, we added request. Uh, we added a test member to the request object. Remember that the request object is just a normal JavaScript object that was set up by Express for us. So we can add or remove features as we want. In this case, I just added a key of test with the value of Wolf. And then I called the next middleware. Um, now, interestingly, next did not transfer to slash greeting. It went right down to here. So for example, if I type console.log request.test here, and maybe another console log that just says, um, in the first handler. And then we try to hit the endpoint again, John Snow. Um, we only have woof once still. So it didn't console log this stuff. And the reason is that the request did not match the slash greeting endpoint because it, it matched slash greeting slash name. So the way that the request cycle works is a request comes in, 
to express with a certain uh, path. It then um, matches the first handler with that path, or if it's just a general handler, that matches all of them, like in our case. So the request comes in, it hits app.use, and then because there is no response issued in app.use, and we call next, we get to go looking for more middleware to match. So we do app.get slash greeting slash name. Um, and then it goes into this handler and then issues the response that we see. So in other words, the next parameter transfers control to the next applicable handler, if that makes sense. And I often like to return next just to be explicit that this function is exiting and calling the next route handler. But you'll see people emitting the return statement. So basically, um, that's the general pattern for middleware. Um, you can either put middleware on specific paths or HTTP methods. For example, if you only wanted to do this middleware on post requests, you could do post app.post instead of app.use. And in the inside the middleware, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can modify the um, request object. You can log things. You can um, cause some other kind of side effect for your app. Um, common uses of middleware are things like authentication, like passport.js, um, which we'll get into in a later video. But I think the most important thing to talk about now is actually error handling. So in Express, um, a, one of the things that trips people up a lot is the error handling, because it is a specific type of middleware that you build, which um, is kind of not super intuitive if you don't understand how the request cycle works. But since we just explained it here, I think maybe if I just type it out, we can start to break it down and understand more. So I'm going to do an app.use here, and I'm going to pass it a handler for the first argument. Um, but instead of having three arguments, re request, response, and next, I'm going to pass it four arguments. And when there's four arguments to a handler, Express kind of knows that it's going to be an error handler because it expects the first argument to be some sort of error, basically. Um, in this case, I'm going to set the response status to be either the status code that we placed on the error, or by default, it can be a 500. And then what I'm going to do is just return response.send. Um, error dot message because I only actually care about the error message um, if this were say a production app for example which I'm pretending it is so in this case um, the only way we can trigger this middleware is not by just throwing a new error but we actually have to pass the error into the next fallback as a parameter. So basically, once we pass, type in Voldemort on this slash greeting slash name, next will, and I will return it by the way, um, next will contain the error as the first argument. And then when it transfers control down to this handler, error will come in as the parameter, the first parameter. And then we'll set the status and issue the response. So let's actually look at um, what Voldemort puts out now. So we can do Voldemort. And instead of just a straight up stack trace, we actually have a nice clean, we cannot say that name. 
Uh, you might want to put like error in front of it or some kind of thing depending on your application use case. But in general, we just um, wanted to see a nicer formatted error instead of the full stack trace. Um, so the other thing about error middleware is that you always have to define it last. So before the app.listen, the last middleware slash handler that you should have is an error handler. And that's because um, any of these middlewares can return an, um, an error. So if uh, quest.error, for example, it's not really a real thing, but maybe we had some middleware that injects an error on a request object. We could return next request.error here. And no matter which handler calls next with the error object, it will not get matched until we have a um, handler here, which with the first parameter, because we pass something in next, basically. So um, you'll just see this pattern a lot, and you'll probably get more used to it as you develop along. But I would say the key takeaways are um, figure out which routes you want to match with your middleware, or whether you want it to just apply to every single request, in which case you don't give it a path as the first argument. And then for an error handler, um, your, your job is to clean up the error message. In this case, I'm just taking the message aspect and sending it. And um, it always has to be defined last. So all of your other routing and middleware goes here, and then at the bottom, your error handler. You can do a lot more crazy stuff with this. Um, in my production app, I have um, my own class of error message called API error, which extends the built-in error message. And there are more features on it, like there's a status code, a message, and a title. And um, it's just a little bit more robust, but this is the general concept. And I would definitely check out the Express docs for error handling because they have a whole section on it because it's such an integral part of building Express apps. All right, um, that's it for this video. And I hope you learned something.